welcome to a new Harry's Garage video. And today I'm really excited about the car we've got in the garage because this is the Touring Superleggero and Aero 3. This model was um, had its world premiere Salon Privé last few days and it's just driven from there to spend the night in my garage and I've got it for a few hours and I just saw this on the stand and I just love the story behind Touring and what they're doing and creating these sort of very special cars, very limited run. There's only, of the Touring Aero 3, there's going to be only 15 examples. This is number one. Look at it. And it's there to celebrate the sort of Touring history when they, from the 30s, when they were doing these streamlined cars. Touring has a fascinating history. You've got to remember they were the first people to use a wind tunnel. And you used to get in the 30s, when you were racing in the 30s, you wanted every advantage. You had, a, you had the engines from certain manufacturers in those days. Alfa Romeo were top, Ferrari hadn't even appeared at that time. But how did you get that competitive edge? Well, if you could find a, a, someone who could make an even more streamlined body, that would give you a few seconds. And that was the, how these sort of um, coach build companies like Touring Superleggero um, were created. Zagato was another one, based and did race cars as well. But if you look at the back catalogue of what's in the Touring Superleggero, what cars they've done in the past, it is extraordinary. It was the very first Ferrari, the 166, had, was a body done by Touring. Obviously the Alpha 8C as well. And there was the streamlined version, the 8C 29 LM which went to them on. This is the car sort of celebrates this. The original owner wanted to celebrate that car, which is the number 19 on the side. Lots of history to go around, but I want to have a closer look at this car and this extraordinary streamlined body it's got. Now, you won't be surprised to hear that the donor car underneath is Italian and it's Ferrari F12, or you can actually have the 812 Superfast if you prefer. Then they strip off all the bodywork and create this unique carbon fiber body for it to celebrate that teardrop um, look of the car. And I think it works superbly well. It's wasted, so the teardrop, it comes to a narrower point. And they used to use this idea of a vertical fin and a horizontal uh, spoilers in the 30s. This was to add stability to the body. And this sort of recreates it. There are two little winglets here um, either side here that will go up to this sort of angle. I don't know if I can get them to work um, while the car's static, I'm not sure. And then there are twin uh, fuel fillers either side as well, because that's how you, the race cars used to be, so you could refuel this in a real hurry um, at Le Mans. Two giant exhausts, they're not actually real. I see there's smaller exhausts up them. I mean, you could, rabbits would disappear up there if they had a ch half the chance on the farm, but uh, it is a very dramatic looking car. Different headlights and a, and a new nose. If there's one area I'm slightly critical of the car, just I wish it had the wonderful badging on the front. This is um, actually stuck on Touring Aero 3. I think it almost it deserves a, a better badge. And then the flashes of orange, not quite sure if they slightly jar to my eye with the red, uh, but I'm being very fussy. Um, but that is a, um, because of that early Alfa Romeo, this car was built to celebrate. That's an owner, owner Pacific thing. Superleggero is super light. It was a manufacturing process that Touring um, sort of patent and were famous for and there's a lot of people went to them to have the super zero super lightweight body it was a lovely touch so when you open the door you look at the seat you'll see aero 3 lights up in the headrest there but i just want to have a look at the engine on this it's always an impressive sight under here but particularly so on this example look at that the big V12 tucked right into the bulkhead as you expect, but all the signatures, the people involved in the build of this, and here you go, number one of 15. There's Louis, he's the um, designer, so he got pride of place there, and he's all the guys who constructed it. Magnificent engine bay, and of course this all bespoke, all in carbon fibre as well. The two air boxes here as well, feeding this engine, so obviously normally aspirated, um, this F12 engine, 730 horsepower, nearly 9,000 RPM, quite an engine. Then obviously on this car, it's all unique with this rear hatch. Now the owner of this car decided what he wanted to use it for was to store his helmets 
I don't know if he's going to use this car on track or whatever, but it's a wonderful uh, throwback. Beautifully painted helmets, and this is the history of this car. Photographs of the build and that sort of thing. But another owner might decide he wants to use his car as a GT and sort of maximise the sort of boot space. This is actually the exhaust. It's all trick because it's been wrapped around this body and so it has a unique exhaust system on it to make it narrow at the, uh, at the back and keep the two outlets sort of in the middle of the car. But I just love the detail of this car. It would be an experience every time you open this car and you look directly into the cockpit of the car. So anyway, what this car is all about is the driving. So let's take it outside now. There's a lovely door lock, unique door lock on this car. First, we have a pull Porsche reminiscent of a sort of strap or just the simple way of closing the door. But outside, there's like a button just at the top of the door that you press and hold. You think, is it going to open? And then the door just pops open a little crack. And uh, that's how that works. Obviously, inside here is very reminiscent of um, Ferrari, uh, as you'd expect. Touring Aero 3 on the wheel, though, but everything else is similar but on this car they have trimmed it beautifully for um, whole park auto that's all that's telling me the sensors etc um, yeah they've trimmed it in this sort of nylon red nylon that wraps around on the door I open the door again I can see it going out with the door some um, straps here just to keep some things in if you've got your papers your race papers your maps that sort of thing flash of red body colour here and then of course behind there is no need for a rear view mirror but there is a rear view mirror because I have an electronic rear view mirror here so I can actually see exactly what's behind in this car also clever other unique details I love how there isn't a sort of glove box but there is this this is just sort of the instruction manual easy to get at no no reflection on this actual car there is this teardrop as we said in the design just going back this sort of narrow sort of window um, so I just leaned in on that little bit more this sort of cozy feel cockpit race cockpit and I've also got a sort of sight line if I look down the wheel rather than having a sort of thing on top of the wheel I've actually got a sight line like a rifle on top of the dash red to keep it going dead straight but crazy uh, mile an hour whatever it can do sense of presence that's why you have these cars sense of presence I get in is tremendous and of course that V12, it's 730 horsepower, that's pretty cool as well. Right, I'm going to head out, I am fighting the light uh, because it is half past six and already the sun is starting to set, but wow, what, what a time to take this car for a drive, a Sunday night blast, everybody else is sort of cooking tea and gone home, but no, I'm going out onto some of my favourite roads in a very special car. cars and what cars around. Yes, I think this car is rather, I can see people um, just on the paper going, what on earth is that car going past? It, it sort of has a familiarity and then that rear fin just, just stops you in the tracks when you actually see it. All very civilised, typical of Ferrari. I love the way you can go to auto and just drift along, you get manual. And um, I've got it in sport at the moment. Yeah, and this potential is sort of hid under a little cloak of normalness, but I do know how crazy this car is. Yeah, there's a car come up behind me, and it's like uh, it's like the old sort of tracking shots we used to do at Evo, sort of, um, we sort of, you know, worm level, just sort of, just as it peered out the wormhole and had a look at a car, and that's the sort of level where the camera is at the back. Dual clutch transmission in these. Red line, is it red line at eight? Eight four. The, the Ferrari engines are off the scale in their V12. So you can have a choice of whether you do it on 812 or super fast. But um, straight, I'd probably, having driven both, I would be steering towards F12, I think, if you actually wanted to use the car. If you're just going to use it for those wild moments, well, then you might go super fast. So it's me trying to justify this car in my head. It's 5,000 hours goes into this car in the construction. And if you look at the shut lines, 
trying to get carbon fibre to shut and mould and meet as well as this car, that really takes some doing and this is their first carbon fibre car. It's a fascinating company just looking back at Touring Superlogera and some of the other cars they did and one of the, probably the final car, they were doing a, a Bristol 401 but I suppose the more famous car they did was the original Jensen Interceptor, the very first Jensen Interceptors were done by Touring then that, when the company closed in uh, 1966 it then moved over to the UK, so glorious legacy with the company doing my usual thing. This is where we come out, um, out of Burford. Let's have just a little look and wake this V12 up, up this hill.
makes to me it's way more desirable than that disco volante they did was that Alpha 8C which is slightly compromised. This is a compromise, this is wild. <laughs> so grateful to the first owner for letting a few journalists drive this car including me and I don't know look what you get a unique body a most glorious car wonderful legacy company doing the design underpinnings of one of the greatest cars currently driver cars there are and a look and a presence that is it absolutely blows my mind this car um, so yeah as you can tell I have enjoyed this brief drive in this car oh, one of my favourite bits of road I'm going to disappear um, and just enjoy a few more moments of this car but I hope you've enjoyed this video and this little taster of what is uh, touring Supra's Aero doing and the Aero touring Aero 